Hello everyone, we've finally got the soil test done. It's been an age settling so we've had to wait for it so we can get the clear water for the sampling. Right, I'll just take you through the basics. Most kits are the same, but the, the procedure's the same anyway. So, you get your soil sample, two inches below the surface, down four inches below, take a good sample from all over the garden, dry it, take the stones out and then you rubbish and then put it in a jar, one part soil, three parts distilled water and let it settle and that could take anything, in our case it took a week so it shows you how long you have to wait for these things. Then you get a soil kit which they're all basically the same but we'll go through it. You take the clear water from the top, you put into the little sample jar they give you uh, a liquid and then a powder shake it for 30 seconds and let it settle and it comes up with one of these colours it's quite simple it's that's the ph of the soil which is normally green to dark green to light it doesn't matter you've got a little chart we have a chart to follow so as you can see so you just follow the chart and it'll tell you the state of your soil uh, this is nitrogen phosphorus and potassium so looking at my results I can see that that is a little bit too alkaline for the vegetables not a lot so I'll just give it a dose of, of uh, sulfate of ammonia or just that these aren't too far out so a good general spring fertilizer will bring those into line I'm quite happy with that that one's a bit low but that could have just been the sample it'll adjust itself or I will adjust it with a, a good dose of spring fertilizer and that is your soil testing it's night you must do it so you know what fertilizers to put on every year um, quite pleased with that that'll do we'll, we could leave it and grow as that but I do like to adjust it a little bit okay that's the chart for the pH level you can see it's not far out of that I'd like it more there so I shall address that myself that's no problem the nitrates hmm we're sort of here so it's medium to high that's fine phosphorus there's nothing wrong with the phosphorus look that's fine but so just a general fertilizer will do it um, potassium I will put the potassium on I think because that is way down the scale and you keep potassium up and you it will make more fruit I don't know how it's got that low but we'll address that straight away that's no problem just using organic fertilizers and we'll soon have that adjusted Okay. These benches are only in the temporary because while well, we get the seeds going. That one, that's the cabbage doing well, cauliflower doing well, Brussels sprouts doing well, the lettuce, the little gems doing well, that's the spring cabbage doing well. Money maker tomatoes, excellent, we're pricking these out any time. The three varieties of tomato we did, doing fine. Onions, they're fine. And now we're going to put in some beetroot. I'm putting, I'm putting the beetroot in in cells, because we want to use this for what you call baby beetroot with the salad. So I'm going to grow it quickly in cells in here take it down the garden, put it in some good land, bring them on into nice small ones and they can go straight up to the house. But we need to go in on. If you notice the seeds are very large on bee root. There's one of the most, one of the unusual seeds that you'll get more than one plant out of the seeds. They have uh, like a cell of seeds instead of a seed. So if one or two come up, just take one out later on before we move them down into the garden. I'll just finish this row off. We'll finish putting the parsnips in today, hopefully. 
Right, if you look at it, look, the very large seeds, very large. Just one in each, and don't be surprised if you get more than one up. I'll just cover those up quickly. Nothing special. We'll get them up as quickly as we can, grow them as fast as we can so they're nice and tender and small. I'm not finishing them all because we ain't got the time. And then give them a drop of water, look, just to moisten the top. Compost is nice and moist anyway. Right, I'll finish those off and put a label in, of course, so we know what we're doing. And we'll see to those later. We'll go down the garden now. Um, just one or two things we'll take you through first that we've done. This is our potato box that you can remember. We've actually changed the top to black now because we didn't like the red. Nothing coming up yet, that's fine. Just one little reminder that we didn't tell you before. When they are growing well and they're beginning to set potatoes, it will be getting towards oh, maybe June, which is going to be very, very hot, hopefully. Now, if these do get hot, they will fail. So if the weather starts to get really hot, get them outside where it's a bit cooler. They'll be early. It could take seven weeks, but if they get too hot, fail. These are your boxes ready for putting the tomato plants in. Nice big fruit bowl for them. Wire in the bottom. They'll be, when all this is gone, they'll be spaced out. The tomatoes and the cucumbers will all be putting those in here. Yeah. I brought the dwarf beans in. They were down the garden, but the weather was so, so cold and the poor things weren't moving. I brought them up yesterday and they've started to move already. The only trouble is when they are ready now, I'll have to harden them off again. Just here, I've put the courgettes and the cucumbers in. Right, put in the parsnips in. Parsnips are notoriously bad germinators. So, these are the seeds. Look, I'm putting them in groups of three, about six or seven inches apart. When they're up, we'll reduce them to one finish this row so you can see look there there oh it's four there look but it doesn't matter we take one take one out you get a lot of seed but any seed you have got left over try not to save because parsnips are notoriously bad if the seed is old it will not germinate one's jumped a bit up there so that'll be all right that is it the seeds are in and because my ground is notoriously bad what I do is I've mixed some well I haven't really mixed it I've screened some topsoil that I've bought put a little tiny bit of my own compost in and screen that as well and what I do is I give it a top press like that If you see my my old land won't rake over very well, we'll never know where we are with them. So I always do that with parsnip. In fact you could do it with any seed actually, you'll get better germination. Right, we get the rake and just we hardly the weight of the rake on this, just to smooth it and flatten it. Then if you rake between It just scatters a bit of the top on. I put two rows of parsnips in and take the line out. I put two rows of parsnips in. Both rows are different varieties because the the most seed failure I've had has been with parsnips. So two lots of seed, both different, and hopefully we'll we should get a good crop. We'll see when. Uh, when we're lifting this winter and we'll be thinking about how nice it's going to be for Sunday dinners. So there, we're in the greenhouse as you can see and the plants are coming on so well that we're going to have to start potting them on now and getting them out of these seed trays. As you can see the plants are well advanced 
we've got a seed leaf plus extra growth on all of them now I've done one tray here this is one tray I've done um, I took a hundred plants out of one seed packet um, so just for a few pounds you can I've got over a hundred tomato plants I'll obviously been giving some away this year this so we finished that tray we started on another tray if you can remember putting these in the tumblers the super sweet cherry and the sun gold they've all come up if you remember we left this piece empty that's not a failure that's because there weren't enough seed in the tray so first of all look we're going to do the tumbling tomatoes these are the ones we'll put in the bucket now so always take hold of the seed leaf here and get anything really you can buy special things but I like to use a piece of bamboo and you go underneath and just prise them up and if you get two together just prise them apart like that you see that's how you get the seed out now for potting them in I use the other end of my bit of bamboo and I make a a nice hole up you see so you're not going to be and um, straight in about the same depth as they were in the seed tray and bang done next one bang done next one shake them apart don't pull them too on and all the root in touch it with your bamboo I don't know if you can see this there you go look next one in we go same depth straighten them up nicely bang done I'll do four more so because it's quite quick I don't know if you can see in that so this is soil based compost that I make myself so I know it's it's good and everything's in it for them and when I made this compost that's also soil based so I know they used to, there's going to be no check if you can see here that one reject that one anything that doesn't look right just leave behind there we go look loosen them up you see straight in side to side there nice and straight so I'll do these four pots for you. If it's too much compost on, just give them a little shake. Now the idea is, if you use it, just touching these big leaves, if you happen to pull one off, providing it hasn't damaged the, the next growth, it's perfectly all right to put them in, but just be gentle with them. They're only babies. With brought it in to so bring it on so nicely and we're coming up to the Easter weekend so this will go very nice with the Easter lamb and when we get the nice early potatoes up as well we're going to have some really really nice dinners out of this now it's uh, Good Friday today we need to be Pressing on with all this, as you can see, if you look over there, things are beginning to really get going now. So we're going to have a lot, a lot of plants coming up soon. So we've got to be ready for them to get them all out. Can you see how they're all nicely labelled? I know where everything is. I keep it all watered. And the final thing uh, today no tea breaks today we're too busy i can hear the chickens but we're not going out so i just hope you have a, all have a wonderful easter and i'll see you next week okay bye <laughs>